Hello, welcome to part two of my open letter to the developers of Adobe Premiere Pro. This video contains all of the bugs that I have encountered, and if you are a video editor who uses Premiere Pro a lot, and you've encountered any of these bugs, I would like you to submit a bug report detailing all of these bugs, and you can link back to this video. I make the whole process very easy. So anyway, watch part one for more explanation, but without any further ado, let's get right into it. Here's a new one that just started happening and happens all the time. When you click on the file menu, it takes four seconds or more before it opens. Now, if you click on the effect controls or a bin and then you go click the file menu, then it opens instantly. But if you click on the timeline or anything else, it'll take four seconds for the file menu to open every single time you click it. Here's a pretty simple one. When you make the effect controls panel smaller like this, you see these numbers have disappeared that used to be there. You can kind of see the edge of it on there. So it's just the way that it's being displayed. Also, when you go up here and you look at the motion tab and you try to make a keyframe or two, that gets overlapped in the UI and then you end up clicking on the hot, scrubbable hot text instead of clicking on whatever you're trying to click on or vice versa. It, it, it's kind of terrible. This one has been a problem for a long time. With particular mice, when you click on the scribbable hot text and you move really slowly, because let's say you're trying to finesse it and be really careful, it does not start changing the value, watch this, until you really accelerate. You see that? I did submit a bug report for this one over a year ago. Uh, it still has not been fixed, but there's a lot more information about it in the thread that I also posted, so you can go look at that. Oh, this one is weird and consistent. Every time that you deselect a graphic, the monitor shakes. The program monitor just shakes around. I don't know why. Sometimes it's up and down. Sometimes it's left to right. <laughs> I'm just showing you footage here of it happening so you get maybe a bit of a more intuitive idea as to under what circumstances it happens. It's not a huge deal, but, you know, when you're trying to be really careful with your graphics... It's annoying that the monitor keeps shaking and glitching and doing the black flashes and stuff. Here are two problems, maybe they're bugs, that I encounter all the time. These are very consistent. When I'm looking through a video and I'm watching stuff, it takes some time after I press play before the video will actually start. Let's go to a replay on that one. With manufacturing difficulty drawbacks like unavoidable reflections when watching. Okay, I'm going to slow this footage way down so we can see what's happening millisecond by millisecond. So I'm trying to put these two clips together. I'm trying to find where they'll edit together best. So I'm scrubbing through here, and I press spacebar, and it starts playing. And then I decide, oh, wait a minute, I actually want to play over here. So I go over here, I press spacebar, nothing happens. It doesn't register that I've pressed it. So, knowing this, I press it again. But at this point, I still don't know if Premiere is actually trying to play the video or not. So I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Finally, I press spacebar again. And then I find out, look over here, it actually has now stopped. Turns out it had registered that I wanted to play, it was just taking its sweet time in doing so. So finally I press spacebar again, this time it responds instantly, and I finally get to play the video. This happened over a course of seconds, but it feels like a lot longer when you're in it. So there are two bugs here. One is, sometimes when you press spacebar to play, it takes way too long before it starts playing. And the other bug is, sometimes when you press spacebar to play, it doesn't even register that you've pressed spacebar. And here we have a more extreme example of Premiere not playing the video. I'm clicking on the play button manually with my mouse here just to show you how bad it is. Click, wait, wait, waiting, 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 and then it starts playing. Now, in this case, I finally figured out after half an hour of messing around that the unrendered audio elsewhere on the timeline is what was causing playback to be so slow. So now it's rendered, and now we're going to try it again. Hopefully. I was, I was Bam. Really there we go. There's my pretty face. Now it's actually working. Now I realize a lag when you're trying to press play might not necessarily be a bug, but there might be some optimization that can happen in there, and maybe there should at least be an indicator as to what Premiere is doing rather than not showing you anything while you wait really intended for you. Here's another bug that has to do with video playback. Sometimes when you're moving the playhead around, it will go to the last position. Ah, you see that? It jumped. It jumped back to where it was before. 
Here, let me show that to you again. Here I'm cleaning up some video, moving some frames around, scrubbing through, and ah, you see that? It jumped back again. Now, this usually isn't a problem because I know that it's going to happen. So I click a whole bunch of times so it'll have multiple places where it will potentially start playing the video from. But I shouldn't have to do that. It's... I think that qualifies as a bug. This isn't just Premiere being slow. This is Premiere not even noticing that I've moved the playhead to where I've moved it. So for the sake of efficiency, I watch the video and edit at the same time. Sometimes I do this at double speed, but usually Premiere's too laggy when I do that. But sometimes when I'm moving these clips around and I'm editing the video as it plays, this happens. Watch this. It's continuing to play. And finally it stopped. And now I can edit footage normally again. Here's a funny display bug that I'm sure you must be aware of. It happens with fully saturated colors, it looks like and they have these weird display problems. It makes using the reference monitor extremely irritating, and this happens basically all the time. So, I'm letting you know, it's a problem. Here's another error that's difficult to pin down. I don't know what causes this. It seems to happen at random, but sometimes you just cannot play video. Nothing happens, you can click around, you can do other things, but notice what's happening to the displays here, the preview monitor and the program monitor. They're not getting any new pixel information. They're just using what's being drawn and redrawn by the, I don't know, I mean, you, you, can, you can see it. So that works, but you can't play anything. It's, it's absurd. But sometimes you get this bug and you can play and you get the audio but you don't get the visuals. So what's up with that? And you fix it by closing and reopening Premiere, of course. Here's a bug I rarely encounter, but it's annoying when I do encounter it. I'm just gonna let you listen. Okay, did you catch that? Did you notice how the audio was kinda skipping forward? That happens when it conforms unlikely to be used outside of very specific situations. You can see that in this case it didn't affect all the audio on my timeline, but here's an unedited clip of what happens. Corsair's HADI GTX all-in-one liquid sand cooling of your PC. To learn more. Sorry about the consistent humming in the background, that's actually from the mic when I was recording this. So anyway, the only solution that I found to this problem is to go in to your media cache files and specifically delete the problem ones. Uh, once you do that, and I think you might have to restart Premiere as well, once you do that and you reopen the project, it will begin conforming them once again. So we're gonna do that here. And then, these ones seem to be good, this is fast forwarded. Corsair's HADI. There we go, GTX as those are fixed. So, I don't know what that is, but uh, ma maybe look into that one. It's rare, though. On the subject of conforming, sometimes you import clips into Premiere, and for whatever reason, they don't conform. Now, the circumstances for this are wildly variable. I don't know why it happens. Sometimes it does happen. Usually it doesn't happen. But when it does happen, you have to... Well, it depends. You have to delete the clips from Premiere. Maybe you have to delete bad clips from the media cache files, you know, bad conforms, it really depends. Restarting Premiere will usually fix it, but just something to be aware of that this is a problem that does happen. Speaking of rare bugs, here's one that I only recently encountered. Some Premiere projects just don't open. <laughs> I can sit around waiting all day for this one to open, and it refuses to do so. It did open on another editor's computer, but no matter how many times, I actually restarted the computer and it still would not open. And I tried opening another project, let's see if this one's gonna open, and it did. So it seems it was project specific. So let's see, it opened a project, let's go back and see if we can open that first one. Nothing. When I had this problem a second time, I tried restarting Premiere, I tried restarting my computer, and I tried trashing the preferences of Premiere, nothing worked, and ultimately I had to use an autosave to get that project back. And let's not forget the fact that Adobe Premiere crashes all the time. If I filed a bug report every time it crashed, I'd probably be filing one every single day, which is why I have such an extreme autosave setup. When I was recording this, I was recording for something else, 
and it just so happened to crash. Oh, that's too bad. The entire thing crashed. In this case, it actually did save, and I got my project back without having to go to the autosave, but Premiere crashes all the time, and it crashes for different reasons every time, so just another reminder. So when you copy-paste a bunch of items, uh, video, audio, whatever it might be, and you paste it into the same project, it's fine. But if you paste it into another project, oh boy, all of a sudden, look at that, look at the difference. The video and audio is no longer linked, and the colors are all different. So I have to go in, and I have to manually relink these, and then change the colors back. Well, that's silly. Turns out also that if you paste more than once, the next couple times that you paste it'll get the colors correct. But the video and audio are still unlinked, so that's a bug. Now in After Effects, we have the ability to put multiple transform effects onto the same single video clip or object or whatever. And this is incredibly useful. Any animators will understand why that's so fantastic. I won't bother to explain it. Now, let me show you guys the same thing in Premiere. In Premiere, there is a transform effect that you can add onto a clip to give it extra motion on top of the regular motion tab. I use it all the time. And this is great because it allows you to do things like make a preset that will have something pop out or do something that you otherwise wouldn't be able to do with just regular motion. The problem is that it's riddled with errors and bugs and barely works. So I'm just going to show you here a few examples of how this goes wrong and why I have to really avoid it because it's so incredibly buggy. In this case, I was using the transform effect to make long website capture graphics scroll slowly downwards. But look at how incredibly shaky that is. Here's another very long graphic, and when I use the transform preset on it to make it slowly go down, it crops it for some reason. And yes, it did render that way. Here's an example where uh, I have these pop-ins and pop-outs, which are really nice. And it just makes this nice little effect where things can enter the frame and leave the frame. But if you use them at the same time, you get this weird thing where they glitch out to the side. Look at this. That's terrible. Why, why is it doing that? Well, it's because I've doubled up on the transform effects. And if you delete one, it goes back to normal. Weird. And definitely a bug. Also notice that the timeline render bar turns red anytime you use the transform effect, which is, I don't know why that is, but it really is taxing on your computer. The motion effects does all the same things, but with no lag and no errors, and After Effects does it perfectly fine. So if we had this working properly in Premiere, that'd be great. Here's one that's not really that important at all. If you apply a preset that's named onto a clip, and then you say undo, the name stays on that thing until you replace it with some other preset. It's not a big deal, but it is a bug. Here's a bug that happened to me once only and really isn't that big of a deal. My cursor would not change into the different cursors that it's supposed to be. You see I've got the blade tool and it doesn't look like a blade tool. Maybe that's a Windows problem, I don't know. Here's a kind of a funny one. Every time, well almost every time, that you reopen the titler, the tools panel shrinks just a little bit. You can watch it here. This is over the course of an entire edit. And every time that I open it, it shrinks just a little bit more, just a little bit more until finally you get sick of it and you have to pull that thing back open so that you can get to your tools again. Here's one that just baffles me. I don't know if it's my fault. I don't know if it's a bug or it's a feature or if I'm doing something wrong. But when I import footage into Premiere, it does so in reverse alphabetical order and it conforms the audio in reverse alphabetical order. Now you can go into the icon view or the list view, and in both of those you can resort it by alphabetical order, ascending or descending. And when you do that, all of the folders and video clips and stuff will be sorted out, it'll be done properly. Now our video system with the Odyssey actually makes folders. It's stupid, but that's what it does. So I have to make sure that it puts those into Premiere properly. But I feel as though Premiere's default setting, currently, is to do stuff in reverse chronological order, even with the folders kind of shoved off to the side. It's absurd. I don't know how to describe this, I don't know what the problem is, but if any of you are having this issue, maybe you can shed some light on the situation. <laughs> Let me know what's going on with this one. 
All right, that is all the bugs. Congratulations for watching the whole thing. So, same procedure here as it was with the feature request video. If you work with Premiere and you've had trouble with any of these bugs, I need your help. Unfortunately, the bug report form is also limited to just 2,000 characters, which is enough for one bug report, but not 20 of them. Fortunately, I've already described each bug in detail in the video, but especially for bugs, each person's experiences will be different. So, you may wish to submit one bug at a time. I know that's pretty tedious. If you do that, you can use the full description of the bug as written in the linked Google Doc, and you can modify that description to suit your own experience. You can also try submitting two or three fully explained bug reports at a time, or you could try submitting all the bugs you've encountered from this video at the same time in a single bug report, but then you won't have enough room for much more than the titles, unfortunately. However you decide to do it, just make sure that you're being as accurate as possible. Don't report bugs that you've never encountered before, and make sure that your description of each bug accurately reflects your personal experiences. Then, copy-paste your bug report into Adobe's official wish form. Be sure to select it as a bug report, and make sure you fill out the extra information accurately, and then hit submit. Again, please share this video and the feature request video with other Premiere editors. The more traction this gets, the more likely it is that these bugs will get fixed. And again, to the Adobe developers, I hope you don't get more bug reports than you can handle, although I do feel like more is better when it comes to bug reports. Anyway, you can contact me and I'll update the video description with whatever information you feel is relevant. Also, I certainly hope that neither of these videos came off as being too negative or too bossy or anything. That was never my intention. I just want for Premiere to work even better for myself and for the other thousands of editors who use Premiere every day. Hopefully these videos will clearly demonstrate exactly why and how Premiere can be improved. So that's everything for now. If there are some features or bugs that you know about that I haven't covered, please leave a comment and just tell me your thoughts in general. There will be more of these videos in the future, so you should subscribe so you don't miss them. And of course, don't forget to file your bug reports and feature requests. Thanks a lot for watching.